was a bag. All I wanted 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 was a bag. Put the top on the floor and then make all these niggas mad. It's your boy, Old Guy Hip Hop News Uncensored. Hey, yo, if you got an iPhone or the Droid lovers out there, look in the description box, yo. We got a wireless charger for you. Fast charge for the extra, extra low. I got y'all, man. Check it out. Let's get it. Why do you think that is a conspiracy to lock you up? There's a task force in New York called the Hip Hop Task Force. And, uh... And they this watch. really does exist. Yeah, it really exists. Um, the, the guy that started, his name is Derek Parker. You can go get his autobiography. Mm -hmm. It's called the Hip Hop Cop. It's in the stores. Mm -hmm. um, he started the task force. He's from uh, Mount Vernon. That was one of Heavy D people. The task force started for Puff. You know what I mean? And Heavy D and them niggas. That's why they started this, the task force. Because uh, Derek Parker's superiors, they didn't like the fact that Puff and Heavy and all of them was making all that money and they thought something suspicious was going on. You know what I mean? They thought it was more than just rap music. So they hired Derek and they, they told Derek to start this team to investigate these people, you know what I mean? And um, you know, it just grew from there. They started investigating other rappers and more rappers and, and we just so happened to be one of the groups, Mob Deep, that they've been investigating since like 94, 93. Fabulous was being surveilled and then he wasn't. It wasn't like we did a big surveillance thing on it. We looked at a few things and then that was it. Such as people he hung with, certain locations he frequented, uh, any other people that had different crimes that affiliated themselves with him. Certain things was going, like, you know, police were, being fo were following us around and, and, and stuff like that. And, and I had heard this buzz of, yo, they got some hip hop cops, you know what I'm saying? Fabulous got pulled over twice, if we remember. It was two instances he got pulled over. One was the possession of the weapon. Number two is one of the other guys that was in the car with him was another guy who runs, who ran with Fabulous. There's a guy that uh, we investigated. His name was Rasharm Davis. And uh, I know that he is a questionable type guy, guns, assaults. At that time, Rara didn't even have a rap sheet. You know, Rara was actually would have had a clean slate and he'd never been you know, arrested for any felonies. There was information that uh, there were guys going around in his group, particular group, that were going out there robbing other rappers. There were investigations with a, a robbery involving Foxy Brown, uh, home invasion, and it was also a uh, another robbery with Buster Rhymes. There were people that were in your crew at one point, you know, and I don't know what type of relationship you might have with these guys, but that they were doing robberies on other rappers. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of this before? I've never heard of this. It's kind of dope. The first time I ever heard of the hip hop cops was because of you. Oh man, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying because I they I always because... felt like they used to shut you down all the time. Like you were a real target for the hip hop cops. Like what's your relationship with them now? Like cool, man. Shouts to shouts to the uh, <laughs> the hip hop cops or the special unit that's out there to watch a high profile entertainers. They cool with me, man. I mean, I've been at this for for a long time, back and forth with them. I've been before they were hip hop cops, they were actually the gang unit from when I used to go to the tunnel and all that. And then, you know, as the notoriety of rap got bigger and we started getting real checks, uh, they said, well, we probably need a special unit for some of these dudes because they feeling like they doing whatever they want to do because they got money. Okay, let's talk about money, though. Um, okay. After, you know, the murdering <laughs> thing was a massive thing. Yes. And you guys, you know, the whole, everyone watched how it played out when things crumbled. Yes. Right? Um, and you guys were being indicted. It was a heavy thing, and they strung y'all across the coals for a long time trying to get every dollar y'all had made, trying to Absolutely. say that y'all had did it the wrong way. Shout out to the government. They did a hell of a job. <laughs> and, and what do you mean when you say that? Uh, you know, in, in my opinion, so from all the knowledge that I have from going through the trial, I mean, I went through every process you could imagine. I was really my attorney with Gerald Chagall, who is the absolute best defense attorney in the game. Uh, and I watched the way the government is very strategic in their approach of how they prosecute people. The reason their 98% conviction rate is they're very detailed in their attack. And they're not coming for you unless they sure they can get you. And they go after your resources, so they cut off all our resources. So right. imagine we was very ignorant, me and my brother didn't realize we wasn't doing anything wrong. We're like, this is gonna blow over. It's nothing. And here goes one year, two years, no money coming in. And we're just keeping everyone going, keeping spending our own money. And 
three years go by and we're like, wait a minute, this, something's wrong. And at this point, <laughs> had people stopped doing business with absolutely. What you got? They didn't want to be associated because of the Herein other. Herein lies Adventures Music because this is where the birth of that was. When I realized how many billions of dollars we generated for the businesses that we was dealing with, and when we had a little inkling of trouble, which was no trouble, it was I didn't turn my back on a friend. And that's what the government didn't understand. How could these two guys making all this money not turn their back when we're saying, just leave this guy alone and we'll let you get, we'll, we'll leave you alone. And we're like, he didn't do nothing wrong. I'm not going to tell you a story that I don't even know, yet alone on a friend of mine. You've, are you crazy? Yeah. I could get into the stories how much he helped me, which I told the government. I said, this guy only helped. And when you say this guy. I'm talking about Kenneth Supreme McGriff, my brother. Mm -hmm. Now, if you didn't know Kenneth Supreme McGriff, he was one of the most infamous black drug dealers in American history. You know, um, now thanks in part to his feud with 50 Cent, it pretty much came, you know, a mainstream story that everybody knew about. Now, he got his street name from his involvement with the 5%er nation. Now, we've seen Jay-Z rocking the 5%er chain a few years ago. And the 5%er, you know, was an organization that broke off from the nation of Islam in the 1950s and came to dominate the New York street and prison gang system. Now, one thing we have to remember that Kenneth Supreme McGriff, well, yes, he was in the drug game. He did a lot of things in the drug game, you know, but he also was very influential. You know, you see him with Jay-Z and other people there is getting a lot of things popping in New York and Queens, you know, around the inception of hip hop. So he was influential and he was able to get guys, round guys up together and get them to move out. So the feds pretty much seen it like if you were successful in the street, and you made billions of dollars and you're able to you know, galvanize all these people. We don't want to put you inside the music industry because that will prove false our ideology. I'll let Chris Gotti explain a little bit more about the feds, how they move. Business. Right. And then, and, I, and then, you know, that we that's the that story of people who come from neighborhoods where they had to make decisions that the that could jeopardize the rest of their life, right? Whether they opted hey, bro, to be drugs or whatever. But that story of where they reach out to a young person and say, yo, I didn't do it the right way. You're doing it the right way. I just want to make sure that you're successful. And I've heard that story a number of times where they want to twist that into somehow using resources to illegal resources to further yourself. Well, that wasn't the case. First of all, he did 12 years when we met him. He was in a halfway house. Excuse me, and um, after you met him, when I, yeah, when we met him, we met him in ninety. He was like, I believe ninety four, ninety five, mm -hmm. uh, and he didn't have the same power right. financially from when he was, when he was supreme, supreme. Right. He came home and he was just like anyone else that goes away and comes home. They're not the same person. That's right. It's not like things we're change. <laughs> things changed, and that's where he was at. But he also had a brain. This guy was very smart, and then he was. I guess he seen something in Irv and myself and was like talking to us about music and can we help with this and that. He owned the rights to a book, uh, Crime Partners. And guess what? He made the, the DVD. He made his dream or vision come true. Not just from us. Jay-Z helped. DMX helped. Rough Riders. Everyone participated. Snoop Dogg. You're like everyone, Ice-T, participated in helping this guy, Kenneth Supreme McGriff, to get access or the ability to make this and make come his dream come true the, you know the, the dvd came out and made over six million dollars and the government took it mm. so that could have changed his life this is something that people don't understand it's like that would have made him right on the straight and narrow right from there in the game he had a he got a million dollars from def jam because he had a soundtrack he had every song from every hot artist at the time because people wanted to show love people's paying homage yes and guess what? That wasn't because of me and Irv. That's because of who he was. For, forgive me for being naive, but why, why would the government take it all back? Because they wanted to say it happened because of his drug influence and the things that he had done in the past. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So they tied even, you know, a lot of times that's how they make sure that you can't integrate back into society is they keep you under their thumb and, and watch anyone that you interact with. So it's almost like you made a decision to try to better yourself and you did it illegally and they don't want to allow other people to benefit from something they thought was bad ever right, right, right. In, 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 in generations to come. One.